Yo, what's up Giants fans? It's your boy Kush back at again with another preview video for the New York Giants 2020 season. This is the sixth installment of this series right here, of course, for the sixth week of the Giants 2020. Now, first and foremost, we're 0-5. And before I get into this preview against the Washington football team, two of the, um, you know, definitely two of the bottom feeder teams in the league right now in the Giants and the Washington. I paused there for a second because I realized I don't know what to call them. So as a placeholder, I'm going to call them the potatoes because, you know, the potatoes are, you know, there's red potatoes out there. So the Washington Potatoes versus the New York Giants. All right. Before I get into that, of course, as always, we do a quick recap of the previous week. Um, Giants at Cowboys. And I just want to say real quick, this game was better than I expected it to be. I mean, the Giants offense actually got going. We scored 34 points, by far our season high. And to be honest with you, I'm thinking back to last season, there's only a couple of games where we scored more than 34 points. Like the Giants offense last season was scoring a lot, I'll tell you that. We probably averaged somewhere around 28 to 30, but this was a really good game offensively. We certainly didn't lose the game because of the offense not being able to score points. You know what I'm saying? The run game got going, which I liked a lot. Jason Garrett opened up the playbook which I liked a lot. Those were two things that I asked, you know, to happen. I was like, please, Garrett, open up the playbook. Please get the run game going. Please get Darius Slayton involved early. And look at that. He got Darius Slayton involved early. Darius Slayton had a big impact on that game. You know what I'm saying? The reason we lost that game, however, is something that I didn't think would happen. In my preview video, I actually had the Cowboys winning. So I guess my prediction did come through. I had them winning, though, 21 to 16. Uh, they won 37 to 34. Our defense failed us, you know, high key. And I'm not even sure if I could really blame the defense per se for failing us because we got even more injured in that game. We were already banged up going in, missing safeties, missing one of our starting outside linebackers. Now we're missing both of our starting outside linebackers as Lorenzo Carter went down with an Achilles tear and his impact on the game was immediately noticed. Not only was there a little bit of a pass rush presence gone, but the run defense completely just went down the drain as well. That was one thing Lorenzo Carter was always good at throughout his years in the NFL. He wasn't, you know, putting together his rushing skills that well, but he was always a pretty effective run defender. He was out, Golden was in, and Golden's basically the opposite. Golden's a pretty good rusher, but a terrible in run defense, if I do say so myself. So you notice that immediately, and then the Cowboys started getting going. So um, part of me is like, I'm not sure if I can blame them. Then again, you got to adjust. Then again, that, that defense is facing so many injuries. And for Patrick Graham, to up until that week, coach a very elite defense with what little parts he had is honestly nothing short of amazing. And now you gave him even less parts and he just couldn't adjust in game, which is a learning process. You know what I'm saying? It's his first year over here with the Giants. I'm going to give basically all the coaching staff a pass. Um, I know that does sound hypocritical, I admit, of me because I'm not giving Jason Garrett any pass. The difference is, though, uh, Garrett is like probably the most experienced coach that we have on this um, team right here. And also one other thing, wide receivers, and this is on uh, Joe Judge. If we had maybe five wide receivers that game instead of four, we probably would have had a bit more rotations. That means guys are a bit more well-rested. And DJ has a you know bit of variance in targets that game we only had four wide receivers maybe that could have done something to help the offense produce even more i'm not sure i'm just tossing the idea out there either way this was our best game overall as crazy as it sounds get into washington versus giants first things first we'll go over the injury reports as usual right now in the giants their injury report they got a couple guys listed here uh let's see here collar fackrell who was in limited practice on Wednesday with an ankle injury. Dexter Lawrence, who was in limited practice Wednesday with a knee injury. Jabril Peppers, limited practice on Wednesday with an ankle injury. Darius Slayton, limited practice with a foot injury. Jesus Christ, we cannot be missing any of these dudes, let alone all of them. These are all starting players. Darius Slayton, we're only four wide receivers deep right now on the Giants. Once again, terrible, stupid planning and management by Judge and whoever else is in charge of that. We really should be running five. But you can't have your number one slash number two receiver and Darius Slayton being out. Unacceptable, man. Jabril Peppers, I mean, you know what? We low-key survived without him. And I may do a video about whether or not we should trade Jabril Peppers. If you watched the Young Guns podcast last night, um, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know what? We could survive without him. Dexter Lawrence, nah, we need, we need him in there. Our run defense is already suffering as is. And we need all the pass rush help we could get. Same goes for Kyle Fackrell. He's currently the starter. He's actually the second string guy being promoted to start because of injuries. There's no way we can miss him. So I hope all these dudes 
or at the very least three quarters of them will be present in game you know what i'm saying i hope this is none too serious now on the washington football team it's weird i went on both their website and on the giants website and they haven't they've listed players that are currently on the injury report but they didn't list whether or not it's limited practice full practice did not practice or whether or not they're out for the game right now so it's weird so i can't really pass judgment on this they got joshua garnett uh, a guard who's out with an illness dwayne haskins quarterback i'll get into him a bit more out with an illness chase real roll you know i don't know how to pronounce that last name rollier center out with a knee um greg stroman cornerback uh foot injury antonio gibson who i think is currently their starting running back uh toe injury kyle allen who i'm pretty sure is their starting quarterback left shoulder injury so here's the thing right out of all the players here there's probably like two guys that honestly would impact the team if they're gone that being kyle allen and antonio gibson because kyle allen is the new starter and antonio gibson is their number one running back now let's get into dwayne haskins and the whole washington quarterback situation first off i want to say the giants should win this game i just want to put that out there now this thing the giants are going to get their first w and a big part of it has to do with the fact that washington is just a worse team than us now it might not say that record wise it might not say that according to the stats and whatnot but washington is a worse team than us all right they have a worse offense than us it might have started off hotter than we did but it's not hot right now and their defense while also started off really hot only got that defensive line and that's it nothing else on that defense scares me nothing else on that defense is actually tells me oh this defense could win the game against the giants and another big part of that is their quarterback situation washington is in a complete you know mess right now with their quarterback situation they benched their first overall pick from last year in dwayne haskins because he was underperforming you know what i'm saying they completely forget that the dude barely started like what seven eight games in his rookie year he's five games into his second year now i'm not a dwayne haskins fan but you just didn't give him a fair chance and they didn't give him a fair chance last year they benched the guy god knows he's probably never going to be the same because the mental toll that takes on you right you start kyle allen kyle allen who actually may be better than haskins but that's not what i'm discussing here kyle allen then gets injured in game and you bring in alex smith who hasn't seen the field in two years and now Kyle Allen is on your injury report. It's not clear as to whether or not he's going to start. And you might have to start Alex Smith again. Now, if they start Alex Smith, that win that I already said we're getting becomes goes from like a 100% win to a 210% win. Because Alex Smith looked bad once he came in. But not only that, he's coming in a little too early. And this could be a completely separate topic and video in its own. You know what I'm saying? It's a great comeback story. And I am happy for Alex Smith, the person, you know what I'm saying? It's great that the man was able to come back from such a gruesome foot injury, something that honestly should have ended his career. And honestly, I kind of think that he shouldn't have come back to football. Maybe it's a pride thing for him, but I honestly think, you know, he had a good enough career. He should have, you know, stayed away from the game, you know, healed up, be able to use your leg for the rest of your life and just not come back to football. He wanted to do it good for him. And it's a great story that he's actually able to play it again. But this man is honestly one back sack away from having that foot being re-injured. It's probably not going to be as gruesome. Be scared for Alex Smith if he comes onto the field against the Giants because one bad sack and it's going to bam. I mean, not to bring up a bad memory or anything, but all it took was one tackle and Dak Prescott was out for the year and we saw how gruesome that was. This is Alex Smith we're talking about here. This, this could end a lot worse. Uh, but like I said, though, that's Alex Smith, the person. Alex Smith, the quarterback of the Washington football team. Y'all better send them out there and our, our win is guaranteed, man. They don't know what's happening with their quarterback situation right now. And even if Kyle Allen steps in, really find it hard to believe that's going to happen. And honestly, this is the worst offense the Giants have faced all year. Washington is the 29th ranked overall offense, the 28th passing offense, and the 30th overall rushing offense. This Washington offense right here. This a moving on the Giants defense. I'm telling y'all, there's no way they're moving on the Giants defense. And they definitely took a step back in the rankings. Now, giving up 37 points to the Cowboys offense will do that to you. But remember, keep in mind, the Cowboys offense is one of the best in the league, only behind the Chiefs right now, right? So now the new rankings of the Giants defense is, you know, they did drop. It's the lowest of the entire season so far. They're currently 19th overall defense. Their pass defense is 17th overall and their rushing defense is 16th overall so definitely a big step back 
This is not the defense entering last week in terms of rankings. I was like 11th to 13th overall in most of these categories right here. But we all know the Giants defense is better than that. I think they're truly somewhere maybe around the 14th overall. Pass defense wise, I still think they're they're probably top 10. They've been top 10 consistently for the entire year. And going up against Dak Prescott and then just the Cowboys offense last week that was firing and all cylinders will drop your pass defense. In terms of rushing, maybe we're still you know in that top 15. I have confidence in that. We're better than what the ranking shows, that's for sure. Like I said earlier, it's gonna take, you know, we're probably not gonna be as effective because of the missing pieces, but this Washington team is this Washington offense is not doing anything on us, man. Now as for the Washington defense and the Giants offense, it gets a little bit more interesting. While Jason Garrett finally managed to, you know, get the run game going, and that's more on the offensive line and the players themselves than Garrett, but what is on him is getting the play calling, getting, getting Slayton involved. He really sort of just opened up his mental in that Cowboys game. I think it's gonna be drawn back a little bit against Washington. Not necessarily because, you know, they have a good defense, and honestly their defense isn't as good as everybody hypes it up to be. I'll get into that a little bit in a few here. But mostly because I think Jason Garrett had such a great game plan against the Cowboys because he knows that team. You know what I'm saying? He knows that defense. He knows how to beat them. He's been with them for years. He knows how they operate. I think he's gonna draw it back a little bit. I still think that the playbook is going to remain a little open. I still expect Darius Slayton to be involved. I would want him and I would wish for him to be as involved this game as he was last game from the very beginning to basically the very last snap of the game. I would very much hope for that to happen. I would hope that he keeps some of the trick plays. He's probably not going to do all of them again, maybe to avoid the costly penalties that we had last week and also because he's worried about execution or something. But I would hope he keeps some of that. And one thing for sure I hope that stays is the way we ran the football. We ran the football really up the middle from, for the most part in that game. On, the only times we went outside was seemingly on those end rounds, on those, you know, those cute trick plays. So I hope that Garrett keeps the run game going into that power scheme, which honestly up until week five, we didn't really see. And just like how the Washington offense is the worst we've faced all season, this Washington defense is also the worst we've faced all season right now. So to give you all a quick rundown on where they're ranked, the Washington defense overall, the Potatoes are ranked 23rd. Their pass defense is ranked 13th, which is definitely very high. And their rushing defense is ranked 24th. So the only thing that's standing out here is their pass defense, which definitely surprised me when I looked at it at first. But I really don't expect them to be, you know, I don't expect them to really have a great game against us. This is still the worst defense we're going up against. And I still believe that their best players and their best unit is that defensive line. You know, we're talking Chase Young. We're talking Ryan Kerrigan, Montez Sweat. Those guys, those are the guys you got to look out for. And the Giants offensive line better bring their lunch pails ready because they're going to have to perform good against them. Now, I got faith in my guy, Andrew Thomas. I do got faith in my guy, Andrew Thomas. I think he can handle Chase Young. In fact, I think he will handle Chase Young. I will say this. Young will get at most one sack you know on daniel jones whether that's from andrew thomas or not you know what i'm saying but i do think andrew thomas is going to win the overall battle now for offensive line you know offensive linemen versus defensive pass rushers it's hard to judge these battles especially if you're a casual fan because you would see the uh the rusher get a sack on the lineman and you think oh that's it they won the battle now you got to look at how he handles him throughout the game if the guy just gets one sack and that's it, he's not getting close to the quarterback for basically the rest of the game, the offensive lineman handled him. Obviously, a pancake goes in um, Andrew Thomas's favor as well. Whatever the case is, I really expect Thomas, if matched up on Young, and I do think they're going to match them up because they want to see that rookie, you know what I'm saying, that rookie battle, I think that Thomas will handle him. I got faith in my guy. I'm putting my neck out for him, though. I will acknowledge that. But the Giants offensive line definitely has to come to play. They got to come in pass protection. They got to come hard. They got to come in the run game, run blocking, and they got to come hard. Otherwise, it's, oh, super big it's going to be a little bit of a failed game. But that's all we got to worry about with this Washington defense. And then this Giants offense, which is trash, you know, for the first four weeks. They showed life last week. Here are their current rankings. They're the 31st overall offense, the 23rd pass offense, and I think the 31st rushing offense as well. As obviously, as you can see, there are big weaknesses, the rushing game. I said I hope it, tra it transfers over. It's going to be very dependent on the battle in the trenches. Now for the passing game, I really expect DJ to handle this team. Both games last year, Daniel Jones, arguably his best games, were against um, Washington, that second one. 
But Daniel Jones against the Redskins, I mean, I'm, god damn it, I said the Redskins. <laughs> Daniel Jones against the Potatoes is pretty good. I expect more than anything our pass game to get going. I'm still worried about our run game. I expect DJ to cook this Washington secondary. The reason their passing defense is rated so good is because they've been able to get sacks. It's not really in the coverage. It's really up there in the trenches. But I do think Daniel Jones could get to his receivers if Jason Garrett does his job and scheming them open and calling, you know, a little bit of complex plays, getting the right receivers involved. And I think DJ could get the job done this game. Granted, if we lose against the Washington football team, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I didn't say that. I say we're going to win, and I really think we're going to win this game. It's probably going to be a mid-scoring, I want to say maybe 28 to 24 type of win for the New York Giants. That's what I got for y'all today. Let me know what you guys think. Who do you got winning? What's your support prediction? What's your bold prediction? I might have tossed in some in, uh, post-editing here. Put your thoughts down below, and I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.